Uh, over there, I've got some trig identities, and those are your basic trig identities from last year. There's nothing new about them, but they're what's going to help us reduce. Uh, the top one, that cosine squared plus sine squared is one Pythagorean identity. That should be the most common to you. Yeah. Uh, the next one, fairly common, tan squared plus one secant squared, coming off the original one. And then the other two were originally the double angle identities. They're just written in a different form. All right, so that third one, just to kind of rewrite that one, give you an idea of where it came from. If I multiply by two, I get two sine squared X, one minus cosine two X. So that means cosine of 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So you saw the double angle identities written like that. All I did was go through and so, uh, solve it for the sine squared. So you have double angle identities for cosine of 2x. Um, matter of fact, you had three of them. These are the only two that are going to help us. So these, this form should look familiar. <clears throat> Not necessarily something you absolutely remember. You should remember using that double angle identity. These two you definitely generally have memorized, especially this one. This one's in maybe a little. But these two you did see in the other form. So these are what we call reduction formulas. I can use them to reduce the powers that I'm given in the problem. So that first problem up there, I've got sine to the fourth, cosine cubed. We're getting into an area where you kind of have to just think about a process ahead of time and will it work or not work. We saw that a little bit with parts. Parts you kind of wrote out, hey, did it get better or not? Now you can kind of look at it without writing it out. Cosine and sines work well together because of U substitution. So if I want you, let's think this out, if I want U to be sine, then DU would be cosine. Everybody happy with that? Yes. yes. But that's going to leave me two cosines. So if I let u be sine, we're just thinking this through. If I let u be sine, I get u to the fourth here. Pretty easy. Du is cosine. Now the hard part is that leaves me two cosines unaccounted for. That's a problem. Okay. If I go the other way, Let's say I let u be cosine. My only two choices here. If u is cosine, du's negative sine. The negative doesn't bother me. Not worried about that. But that leaves me three signs hanging out there that I've somehow got to take care of. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Okay. So we got to decide which way to try. This is where you plan it out. The way I just mentioned, if u is cosine, du is sine, that leaves three sines. Is there a way to change by identities a sine cubed into cosines? No. No, I need that even power, right? Mm -hmm. I could change a sine squared or a sine fourth. I can't do with that odd power. Let's go back to the first way that was mentioned. If u is sine, du is cosine, that leaves me two cosines unaccounted for. Can we change cosine squared to sine? Yes. That's the method we want to go then. Okay. So you have to walk through it. So again, if I let u be sine, du is cosine, that leaves me actually a cosine squared, so two unaccounted cosines. I can change a cosine squared in terms of sine squared. Uh, so like on this one, can you change the sine to the fourth before you change it to the fourth? I could change the sine to the fourth to all cosines, but then you're going to let u be cosine and you don't have a du. So I need that counterpart. So to answer your question, yeah, I could change sine to the fourth to all cosines. That, no problem whatsoever. But then I'm going to have a problem with just cosines, use cosine, du, sine. I don't have a sine left over. So, yeah, we can change it. It's just not going to help us because we need both of them because the DU is the other way. Okay? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. My plan 
Here's what I would suggest. My plan, I go out to the left side and go, this is what I was thinking. I'm going to let U be sine X. DU then is cosine X. DX. That's my plan. I've talked it through. That's the way I think it's going to work. And that helps me with my split up. The problem is you start splitting things up, and then you forget what you originally wanted to do. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this as sine fourth x, cosine squared x, cosine x dx. Now when I rewrite it, that's what we were thinking about. Hey, u sine, du is cosine. That leaves me two cosines hanging out there, and I just split it up. It doesn't matter if you put it first or second. It's not going to change anything. All right? So this was my u to the fourth. By my plan, here's my du. It's sitting right there for me. I've separated it out. I need to get rid of the cosine squared. For the cosine squared, I'm going to change that. So let's see, sine fourth x. Cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared x. Cosine x dx. Just, I'm leaving this guy alone. There's my du. And I've rewritten that cosine squared. Now I have nothing but sines, which is okay. That was my plan for you. And then I've got my du out on the end. Wait, isn't cosine squared equal to one half? Uh, sorry, it's, I'm using this one. Oh, oh, right, right. That one would be a lot better. Yeah, this one wouldn't help me. You're right. I could yeah. substitute this, but then I got a cosine two x mixed in there. Yeah, and you don't want that. All right. All right. So. I'm going to distribute this, sine 4th x minus sine 6x, all of that times cosine x dx, and then I can execute the plan I wanted. I planned on doing u for sine, cosine x dx is the du, now it becomes a simple integral. So I'm going to have u to the 4th minus u to the 6th. That's not too bad. Up here, let's see, integral u to the fourth minus u to the sixth du. Easy integral from there, I get u to the fifth over five and u to the seventh over seven. Can you combine those to get u squared? No, because that's subtraction. Remember, they're not like terms. Get it like terms to add and subtract. So now I would have one fifth sine fifth x minus one seventh sine seventh x plus c. And I write it as a fraction in front, but you can just leave it as division too. The substitution, the more familiar you are with these identities, the easier the substitution is. The worst part about these, you've got to think it through. All right, will this work? Is that a chance of working? I'm going to plan out and try that. It doesn't. I'm going to back up and try something else. Okay. You've got to uh, think it through first. Let's look at this one. Let's go integral tangent squared x secant fourth x dx. So I'm going to work through my plan. All right, now tell me this. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared. Secant squared. Derivative of tangent, secant squared. What's the derivative of secant? Tangent secant. Tangent secant. Oh, yeah. So that, I've got to remember that because that's here comes my plan. I'm either going to let u be tangent or I'm going to let u be secant. Okay. Which way works? You want u to be secant? Okay. 
So let's think this through. U is secant. Secant squared. So hang on, let me write it out. Plan U be secant X. Okay, so if U is secant X, what's D U? Did you have it be secant squared X? No. You said U secant, what's D U? Tangent secant. Well, that's okay. I got one of the secants from here. I can steal one. But then how many tangents does that leave you? One. If du is secant tan, you're going to take one of those away. Leaves you one tangent. Can you change a single tangent to a secant? No. No. Bad plan. Let's go the other way. Let u be tangent. What would du be? Secant squared. Secant squared. And that would leave you how many secants? Two. Two. Can you change secant squared to tangent? Yes. There's the plan I want. So secant squared x, dx. Again, think it through. It's very likely the first choice you pick for u is going to be wrong. It's okay. Hey, this will be u. This is du. What's left over? Can I deal with it? If I can, worth a try. If I can't, back up, start over. So my plan is separate this off. We said it would leave two. I'm going to have tangent squared x, secant squared x. There's the two left over. Secant squared x dx. There was that du I'm expecting. Now I'm going to change secant squared to tangent. So on this other Pythagorean identity here. So secant squared is tangent squared plus one. So we're going to have tan squared x. Tan squared x plus one. Secant squared x dx. So there's that du I wanted. There's that secant squared rewritten. Distribute. So I have all tangents. Tangent fourth x plus tangent squared x. All times secant squared x. And I look back at what my plan was and everything's fitting now. Mm -hmm. Use tangent, so I'd have u to the fourth and u squared Pretty simple integral from there. So again, the tough part's all the stuff on the front end where you're trying to think of what to do and then getting that substitution going. From this point forward, it should be pretty easy. Not a lot going on. We're going to have u to the fourth plus u squared du. So u to the fifth over five plus u cubed over three plus c. You give me tangent fifth x over five plus tangent cubed x over three. Let's see. Are you okay there? Let's go with this. Let's go integral. Sine cubed. All right, so one of the first questions was asked, well, can we switch it to all the same trig function? And I said, well, you'd be in a little bit of trouble. Now, here's an example of that. If you sine, there's no cosine. So I've got to make some kind of change here. You know, my original first thought would be, hey, I'm going to let u be sine. That would be a simple u cubed. Yeah. But then there's no du. That's what's getting me in trouble. So I'm somehow going to have to split something off here. Right? There's no other choice to let u be at this point. There's nothing else in there. I, mean, I guess I can do u uh, sine cubed, but then my du is 3 sine squared cosine, which just got worse. I need to create a cosine. The only way that I'm going to create a cosine, I'm just 
going to write out the side need to create cosine. The only way that I'm going to be able to do that is if I split a sine squared off. I split a sine squared off. I've got to have the balance there. Since the du of sine is cosine and the du of cosine is negative sine, I've got to have both pieces in there somehow. Okay. All right, so I've got to get that in there. So I'm going to rewrite this now. Sine x, 1 minus cosine squared x dx. Are you okay there? Mm -hmm. Now, when that sine distributes, I'm going to have a single sine and then a sine cosine squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as two integrals, sine x dx minus integral sine x cosine squared x dx. You can certainly leave it as one integral, but as I've said before, most of you have been splitting it to two, so I'm just trying to continue along that path. You can kind of see where it's going. The first part's easy. That's now a basic trig integral. See, sine cubed was not a basic trig integral, but sine x is. That's not too bad. So this guy here, Integral, what's the integral of sine? Cosine. Oh, close. Negative, negative, negative cosine. cosine. Negative cosine x. Then I got to go deal with that guy. Okay, so I've got sines and cosines. That's what I wanted. Should you be sine or should you be cosine? Think again. Think of the du. Cosine. Cosine? Okay, so let's see. If u is cosine, du sine. Yeah. Works. I have a sine, right? If I went the other way, and a lot of times think of it both ways. You can make sure. If I let u be sine, du is cosine, and that leaves me a cosine hanging. I'm in trouble. Yeah. It kind of work through it both ways. So here we're gonna let u be cosine. DU would be negative sine x dx. And my negative's out front, but it's still going to take care of both there. Right. So now I'm going to have plus the integral u squared DU. Simple integral now. Not much going on there. So we're going to have negative cosine x plus u cubed over 3 plus C, and then I can substitute my U value back in, and I'm good to go. Plus, says cosine, cosine cubed, X over 3, plus C, or you can write it as one-third cosine cubed, whichever. Uh, when we're using the, the properties to change the sines to the cosines, uh, are we taking the 2 out of the 2x and putting it in front so that it just... No, well, we can't do that on this, no. Because remember, that's inside there. How are we just getting 1 minus cosine x? Oh, okay. One. Okay, sorry, I was... The Pythagorean. Okay. That makes sense. Look at one more with the Pythagorean, then we'll go to those double ones. Tangent x, secant 6x, dx. So again, I'm thinking through. Decide if you want to let u be tangent or u be secant. Think about what the du is and what you can do.
Thoughts? Yeah. U equals secant. U secant? Okay, so let's see. If U is secant, DU would be secant tan. So that takes one of my secants away and eats up the tan. I don't have any tans left over. Sounds good. Could you let U be tangent? There you go. You could let u be tangent. If you let u be tangent, du is secant squared. That leaves you four of them. You could change four of them to tangents. You'll just be doing this guy twice. Yeah. Okay. And that's going to be more work. So this is a case that works both ways. But letting u be the tan, uh, u excuse me, u being the secant, that would be the easier of the two ways because you don't have to do the substitution. So you could run into some that work both ways. Check both ways, reason it out. Okay. So here we're going to let u be secant x, du is secant x tangent x dx. Everybody agree with that? Yes. All right. So now we're going to have integral u to the fifth du. Why u to the fifth and not u to the sixth? There we go. I have one used up here. Okay. So if it helps you, what you can do is rewrite it like this first. and Split this guy off. So then you're seeing that du, and there's where I'm getting that u to the fifth. You can see that piece split off. That was my plan. Now it's an easy integral. You do the sixth over six. Not much going on there. So I'd have what's the secant? Secant six x over six plus c. Okay, there. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Integral sine squared x cosine four x dx. Think it through. Okay, let's take a look here. U is sine. DU's cosine leaves you three cosines. Yeah. I'm in trouble. Not really going to work, right? Because that odd amount. U is cosine. DU sine leaves you one sine. I'm back in trouble. Yeah. Right. This is where these double ones are going to come in. Nothing's working to create the Pythagorean because I'm not getting an even power left over. So but I'm still working it through and trying to plan it out. My plan was I want to let u be sine or cosine. Neither one's leaving me an even power of the other. That's telling me neither of those ways will work. That's what's going to lead me to these guys here. So when I rewrite this, sine squared will become one half 
1 minus cosine 2x. There's sine squared. Cosine squared is this. So it would actually become 1 4, 1 plus cosine 2x squared dx. Why the fourth and squared? There's two of them. There's cosine fourth, there's cosine squared, times cosine squared. Everybody okay there? Yeah. All right. We got to get this multiplied out. Because the best part about this is I have a single trig function. All right. So what I would do would be bring the 1 8th out. Get it out of my way. So I have to deal with the fractions. Right. And then I'm multiplying the rest of it out. Right. And it looks pretty bad. But you do have a conjugate in there. So what I would probably suggest would be kind of go out to the side and rewrite it. And just take care of the first two. That would be 1 minus cosine squared of 2x. So those two are conjugates. And then we'd have 1 plus cosine 2x minus cosine squared 2x minus cosine cubed 2x. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a pain to multiply it out, but write it out, the multiplication isn't too bad. It's just a lot of extra work in the middle of the problem. Yeah. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to fill this into my integral. Okay, so far? Yes. Okay, so we really have four different integrals here. Let's look at them one at a time. That one's easy. X. That's just X, right? What's going on there? This one, integral of cosine, not the easiest. I've got to do a U substitution, but it's still a single one. Yeah. Okay. Problem, problem. Mm -hmm. okay. These two are okay. So let's kind of write this out here. I'm just going to write it out in four separate integrals. 1 8, 1 dx, and below that I'm going to write easy. We'll do it, but just kind of get it separated so we know what we're looking at here. Plus 1 8 integral cosine 2x dx u sub basic trig, but we're going to do a u sub for that too. Minus 1 8 integral cosine squared 2x dx and this is going to go back to double angle. It's going to go back to this guy again. Because this will produce a single cosine. The last part. Minus integral cosine cubed. Oh, I forgot my one-eighth, yeah. One-eighth integral. This one would be my plan. If I let u be cosine du sine 
but I don't have any sines, but I can separate a cosine squared off. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have to plan this guy out. I'm going to say plan, separate, cosine squared. Are you okay there? All right. So this is easy. One eighth x, right? Yes. Pretty basic there. All right. So we're gonna have one eighth x. This one here, u sub. Use two x. Du two dx. So then I need a half. DU is DX, which is going to give me a 16th out front. I already have an eighth. Yeah. Now, what's the integral of cosine? Sine. Negative sine. So we're going to have minus oh, sine. All right, so plus 1 16th sine of 2X. My second one. Third one. Double angle. Now the reason I went to the double angle, one of these two, it's going to be the bottom one, was simply because, well, if I want u to be cosine, du is a sine. I don't have a sine. If I create a sine, I need the cosine squared. And that'd be 1 minus sine squared. Then I'm back in the same problem when it comes to that sine squared. Mm -hmm. So that's leading me to this double angle. The nice thing about this double angle piece written this way is it gets me back to a single power trig function. So I'm going to substitute here. I'm going to bring my eighth over. So minus one eighth integral. Okay, so we're going to substitute cosine squared 2x. Going right off of this. Which would be one half, one plus cosine four x dx. Where'd the four x come from? It's already two x, isn't it? Yeah. It's gonna double that guy. And then my last one. Still gotta work this out. I'm right on my last one here. Minus one eighth integral cosine two x cosine squared two x dx. Again, because I've got to have something to do with that cosine squared to get me a sine in there. So I'm just gonna do this one minus sine squared two x. Cross that out. Are you okay there? Let me split this up. With the sine 4x? You already have a 2x there, or is that? It's the top identity. Yeah, it's the top one. Yeah, this is the Pythagorean identity for that. It's still just squared. So 1 8 x, I'm just rewriting this piece. Minus 1 16th, the integral of 1 dx. Minus 1 8, the integral of cosine 4x dx. Oh, yeah, still be 116. I hate the fractions. <laughs> and then over here, minus 1 8 cosine 2x dx plus 1 8 
cosine 2x sine squared 2x dx. Okay there. All right, now investigate the integrals we have here. Easy. And this is where the help in your notes kind of right below what we're doing. That's, that's an easy one, nothing wrong there. Here's a U sub again. We're gonna let U be four X, DU is four DX. So one fourth du dx. Next one, there's a u sub again, because it's just a single cosine. So u will be two x, du is two dx, one half du is dx. And then the last one, I have a mix. That becomes my plan. Would I want u to be sine or u to be cosine? Sine, because if, if u is sine, d u is cosine, I don't have any cosines left. Yes, sir. All right. U is sine x, or excuse me, sine 2x. DU would be cosine 2x times 2 dx. We're going to have a half DU cosine 2x dx. Are you okay there? All right, here is our answer 1 8 x minus 1 16th. Sine 2x, is that first two parts? Isn't it plus? Plus. 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 I got a lot of sign mistakes today. Track of the points, oh yeah. <laughs> you're gonna want them. You're gonna want them on this test. Oh my god. Why? Right. Minus 1 16th x. Easy one. Let's say I got a fourth, so that would be minus one sixty-fourth. Yeah. And here we go cosine sine, so sine four x. Minus one sixteenth. Uh sine two x. You okay there? Right. And then that last one, probably easier for you to kind of go out to the side and think of it as 1 16th integral u squared du. That's what our plan was. So we're going to get u cubed over 3, which would give us plus 148. Yeah, 3 times 16, 48. Sine cubed 2x plus c. And then look, these two can these two cancel. Those two cancel for the fine. And these two combine. They're like terms. So what's an eighth minus a sixteenth? One sixteenth. So one sixteenth x minus one sixty fourth sine four x plus one forty eight sine cubed two x plus c. Here's my final answer. That's like a long one yesterday, Jack. <laughs>